If you are using Blender, then you probably have noticed that it is not industry standard yet. I mean, in major game development and VFX studios. This is the case for several reasons actually, not just one. So I'm gonna start with the obvious ones, then the technical reasons. You see, big studios have spent years, even decades, building their production pipelines around certain 3D software, often Autodesk's Maya and 3ds Max, in addition to Houdini, complete with countless custom plugins and scripts tailored to these 3D tools. And as you can imagine, they are understandably hesitant to throw all that away just to switch to Blender. In fact, making such a switch would be a monumental undertaking, and Blender being free doesn't help a lot to be honest. Especially for big studios. Subscription prices aren't taking a lot from their bottom line. Blender would basically need to perform miracles to justify rebuilding a studio workflow from scratch. On top of that, imagine retraining hundreds of employees who have only ever used Max or Maya. The time and cost of getting an entire team up to speed in Blender would be enormous too. So it is much safer and cheaper ironically for studios to stick with these tools, which they know and they work reliably in their pipeline. For small studios, maybe less than 20 employees, it is more possible I would say to make the switch, but for bigger studios, I don't see how that would be possible, at least for the time being. Another factor keeping Blender out of the industry standard club is the absence of official enterprise support. Major studios pay big money for software such as Maya, not just for features, but for the safety net of customer support and rapid bug fixes. You see, if something mission critical breaks, they can call up Autodesk and expect a prompt solution. With Blender on the other hand, there is no help desk to call, so you are relying on community forums and developers' goodwill. In other words, with commercial tools, when you hit a problem, you can call customer service and they will fix it for you quickly. With Blender, you report a problem and it might take weeks or even months to fix, which would seriously slow down a production. And as you can imagine, this lack of official support makes larger companies nervous, since they cannot afford lengthy downtime waiting on volunteer-driven fixes. Blender also has a lingering reputation issue. Because it is free and has such huge hobbyist and indie user base, some professionals have ironically viewed Blender as the amateur software rather than a serious production tool. And it doesn't help that many beginners and enthusiasts use Blender too. And even though this is not necessarily true, the prevalence of hobbyist projects can make it seem less professional by association, if you know what I mean. You can even hear people say that Blender is great for hobbyists, but artists with a formal education get more out of Maya or maybe Max, or maybe Houdini, implying that Blender isn't for real professionals. But the fact is, Blender is used by a lot of professionals, even trained professionals coming from Max or Maya. While this perception is gradually changing as Blender proves itself in more high-profile projects, the old stigma still kind of makes some studios wary of adopting it. Another point, which is tied to the previous one, I would say there are some practical workforce issues, which play a role too. You see, studios need artists who are already proficient in the tools they use, and right now, the pool of veteran 3D artists fluent in Blender is smaller compared to those experienced with Max and Maya and Houdini. Most professionals in film and game development studios learn the industry standard software, so finding enough senior Blender artists can be tough sometimes especially for what exactly the studios need. A studio could train its existing team to use Blender, but that's a big investment of time and money. Personally, I don't believe this is necessarily a big problem. Even if someone has 10 or 20 years of experience in Max, or maybe Maya for example, it might take 6 months of practice for them to reach the same level of proficiency and comfort while using Blender. But many companies aren't eager to pay for months of training, unless there is a really compelling reason to switch. Based on those four reasons I mentioned, you guys voted on which reason is the most important in keeping Blender from being industry standard, and here is the result. 
Now, I will go over some other reasons, but with various degrees of relevance to this topic. You see, part of the reason for the talent gap is how the industry educates its newcomers. In universities, art schools, and training programs, the curriculum typically centers on tools currently dominant in studios, usually Maya, Max, ZBrush, Substance, Nuke, etc. And students graduate already knowing these packages inside out, and then they carry these tools into the companies that hire them. And this creates a self-perpetuating loop. Schools teach Maya because studios use it, and studios use Maya because this is what everyone coming out of school knows. Dunder has been historically seen as an indie tool, which hasn't been prevalent in formal training pipelines. So, until recently, a lot of new artists simply weren't learning Blender as their primary 3D software, which slows its adoption in big companies. Also, one interesting point I want to go over is that Blender's development priorities have traditionally been focusing on empowering individual artists, freelancers, hobbyists, and small teams. You know, with an all-in-one team rather than to cater into complex pipeline needs for larger studios. In big VFX or animation houses, productions are split across many departments and artists, and they rely on pipeline-friendly features that Blender is currently weaker at. For example, Maya's core architecture is built for large-scale, multi-artist workflow, and studios lean on those capabilities to manage huge scenes and collaborate in parallel. The Blender Foundation tend to add features with solo users in mind, not enterprise pipeline management, even though they are recently doing this. There are exceptions when studios step in to help. For instance, Tangent Animation actually developed the CryptoMat feature to use in their film production. But for the most part, Blender's new features are aimed at general 3D creation abilities, rather than the unsexy behind-the-scenes pipeline tools, which big studios need. But you can take this with a grain of salt, to be honest. But here's the thing. In recent years, the Blender Foundation has added collaborative features, like USD as soon as it came out. Still, there are some limitations, like when it comes to handling large scenes, or when too many artists work together, which is the next point we're gonna talk about. You see, handling massive scenes and projects is another area where Blender isn't quite up to the task, or in other words, it is not up to industry standards expectations yet. In high-end film or game productions, you might have scenes with hundreds of millions of polygons, tons of objects, complex rigs and simulations, all at once. And many users have found that Blender sometimes tends to bog down or get sluggish more sooner than not. And this is quite obvious when compared, say, to Maya, which is usually used in heavy-duty scenarios. Until recently, even something as simple as undoing an action, I mean on a very dense smash or very complicated scene, or navigating a super detailed environment could make Blender chug or freeze, which was a major gripe among professionals watching Blender's development. The developers have been improving this. As you know, each release gets a bit faster and handles more data, but Blender still has a reputation of struggling with very complex scenes. In a big studio pipeline, where time is money, if the 3D software starts choking on a huge environment, or maybe a complex shot, that's a serious problem to be honest, and historically, Blender performance bottlenecks had made studios nervous about using it, especially for the heaviest workloads. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, also please subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching. And I will see you in the next one.